Hi guys, in today's review we'll be looking at a Hornby LNER B1 locomotive. This is number 61243 Sir Howard Mitchell and this is era 5 livery. The product code for this is R3000 and it's pristine and the year it came out was 2011. I've already looked at a Backman one so I thought I'd look at a Hornby one now. Let's see if it's any better than the Backman one. So here goes, shall we? Starting off at the detail bag, you don't get much and it's not painted. What you do get is some steps, a hook and chain link for the front and some vacuum pipes or air pipes there too. Oddly enough, there isn't a front coupler for the locomotive. Like I said, it's not painted and you get some paperwork as well. As we move on to the front of the locomotion now, this locomotive does have metal sprung buffers and they are round as well. We also have the buff beam and housing in red. The buffers themselves do have quite a lot of rivets on there. There are also some holes for detail parts that are in the bag. Moving on down a little bit, we do have the place for the front coupler if, if this locomotive had one, but they're easy to find. We also have some irons to knock off the tracks. Moving on up, we have three lamp irons with lights. The lights don't work, but Hornby have gone to that sort of trouble with it. We also have separately applied small handrails at the side as well. Steps two, then we get to the smoke box door, which is black, with a separately applied dart. Just before the shed code, we do have a step, and if I got this correct, the shed code is 65A Eastfield, which I think is Glasgow. We also have the number of this locomotive, which is 61243. We also have a, a small metal handrail going round. Then we have another lamp pine at the top with a light. And then we have the chimney as well. And there's a few rivets dotted around on the front of the locomotive as well. Moving on to the side of the locomotive now. Both sides are exactly the same apart from the other side doesn't have a reversing rod and a few other lubrication pots and sanding pots on the running board. That's what I can see. It also has the nameplates around that side as well. Starting off at the wheel configuration, this wheel configuration is a 460 and it's a Thompson design. The wheels are just plain black. The axles have been covered up as far as I am aware. All the linkage and valve gear and stuff is metal and it is nice. There's the odd little bit of plastic coming out of the cylinders, but it's not too bad. Speaking of the cylinders, they are lined and they are black. They're lined in red, black and red. The running board itself does have some lining on it, which looks like to be black, white and red or something like that. It looks the part anyway. Like I said, this side does have the reverser and it is plastic. It's in black just near the cab. We also have some pots on there as well, some lubrication pots and sanding pots too, to, to go with the locomotive. The name of this locomotive, being a B1, is Sir Howard Mitchell. And I believe he was a politician and a Polish airman, if we've got this correct from my history. He was born on the 21st of May 1900 to the 8th of April 1983, and he was a businessman and a conservative politician. That nameplate is separately applied. There is a small handrail, really fine small handrail running around the boiler of this locomotive. We also have a steam pipe around this side as well, which we don't have one the other side. Delivery of the locomotive is BR black with lining on the boiler in red, black and red. On to the cab front now. The cab front itself, we do have lining on that again, it's white, black and red. We also have the number of the locomotive which is 61243. We also have the classification and the route availability as well there. There's a step below the cab and we also have glazing in the cab as well. Everything on here is crisply applied as well. Tampo printed is wonderful. As we move on to the part that most people look forward to in a modern day steam locomotive review, and that is the cab detail and the front of the tender. This being a Hornby model, it has not let us down whatsoever. We have a separately applied and painted regulator there. It sticks out from the cab. We also have some piping in copper. We also have a water gauge. We also have dials with numbers on. There's gold piping in there as well. We also have seats that look like seats as well. Like I said, there is glazing in the cab. I'm not sure if it's a bar or separately applied, but there is glazing in there. It's a fantastic touch. There's no wood flooring or anything like that. We also have a plate between the tender and, locomo uh, tender and locomotion. 
We also have a plate between the tender and locomotion as well. Speaking of the front of the tender, the front of the tender is highly detailed. We have handles for the brakes, the water, we have cupboards, we have a scoop, we have a chute as well. It's all there. I think there's a few things picked out as well. It's a really highly detailed um, cab and tender front. As we move on to the tender side now, both sides of this tender are exactly the same to me. Let's start with the livery of the tender. Again, it's in the BR black with some lining around the edge of the tender, which is white, black and red. Well, that correct. We also have a crisply applied lake crest, BR lake crest in the center, and it is crisply applied. There's some lining on the sole bar of the tender, the chassis of the tender. We also have some steps, axle boxes and springs all down the bottom and some bracing as well. And we have some grab irons or handrails on the side of the tender as well. As we move on to the back of the tender now, to be fair, this back of the tender is pretty detailed from Hornby. Yes, we have metal sprung buffers and they are round. We also have a back coupling already applied, along with some irons knocks of off the tracks. Buff view and housing again, like the front, is in red with a few rivets. We do have a hook already applied and a vacuum pipe, I believe, as well. Moving on up, we also have the back of the tender in black, no lining, just plain black. Like I said before, we have handrails at the back as well. We also have some piping for the lighting on the lamp irons. We have three or four down the bottom, then we have two steps, then we have some more piping, then we have a lamp iron and a lighting at the top. Again, the lighting doesn't work. I think there's also a molded plaque on there somewhere for the tender as well. As we do an aerial view now on top of the tender, Starting the usual places, we have the water filler cap. We also have some molded detail as well for chains and stuff to for tarpaulins, I guess. We also have a circle thing dome in the center of what is the tender, I want to say. That is all there. I think it's all separately applied, or most of it is anyway. Moving along, we have some bracing for the coal load. Speaking of the coal load itself, it does move. I'm not sure if it's removable or not, but it's lovely coal load. It's not too big, not too small. It's just was nice. Then we also see the cupboards as well at the end. Like I said, the coal load, I'm unsure if it does move or not. As we do an air review on top of the locomotive now, starting the usual place, which is the cab. The cab itself is in black. We do have some rain ducats on there as well. We have a vent, or I think it's a vent, which is molded open. Still a great touch. And we have a few rivets dotted around on top. Next, we come to the whistles and safety valves. It's the usual story with these from most manufacturers. Metal safety valves and plastic whistle. We do have some washout plugs. Also in the glazing in the cab window from the outside, we have some gold trim around the window, which is fantastic touch. It looks the part. Again, I've said delivery is BR black with lining of red, black and red on the boiler bands. We also have a dome, which looks to be separately applied. Then we have a chimney as well with the nameplates and handrails and all that good stuff. These are a mold line or anything down here. It's just slightly off the boiler, well hidden by Hornby. And then again, we have the bracing and the sprung buffers. As we now take a look at underneath the locomotive again, the front bogey does have a bit of play in it when it swivels. It does play quite a lot. You can get the other way around. Um, so that's a good thing. On the cylinders themselves, we do have some holes for some detail parts that I don't think I have in my bag, which is a little odd. Again, we have some sanding pipes, brake shoes, and all the rest. And we also have some molded detail on the chassis of the locomotive, which is good. Sorry if I didn't show that. We have four screws to take off the base plate, and the base plate is hardwired. There should be a picture of what's underneath the base plate coming up. Again, it looks like we have bearings in there as well. But like I said, it is hardwired by the looks of things. But we do have metal strips, copper strips to the wheels. All six driving wheels have this. It's a great touch. I like it. Some don't, but it does the job for me. And again, we have a metal wheels, like I said, and some steps underneath the cab. We don't have any, like I said, brake rigging. We don't even have brake rigging for the tender. And finally, we move on to the loco and tender connection. This being Hornby, it's the most reliable one, I think, in my opinion, anyway. We have a metal bar going across with two screws. You can adjust the one on the tender to how close you would like it. And then we have some wiring going round for the plug. That is how I like it. It does the job for me. It's reliable. Fantastic. Again, no brake rigging for the tender. But what we do have is 
Copper strips again on the six wheels on this tender. Very fine ones, but they are there if you look closely enough. We also have a water scoop. And again, we have the NEM coupling and we have the sprung buffers. I do apologize, not much to look at. I think we have two or three screws to take off the base plate. So that's it on the tracks, guys. Next will be the usual points test and the second radius. So here goes, let's see if we can do it, shall we? Not too bad, what's that, 25 uh, on analog. It's not too bad. It's quite impressive actually for me. It managed that pretty well, actually excellent, if I'm honest with you. Uh, next will be some slow speed and we'll wind it a train, shall we? So here goes. Lovely and slow. Again, 20. Seems to be a great speed for it.
So yeah guys, that's the end of the running session. Before I give my opinion, I do what I know, I'm going to show you what it ran with. So we had the Pullmans with a Gresley full break, which looked okay to me, I quite liked it. Looks quite nice with Pullmans. And then we had a freight, just random bits of freight. Simply because this is a mixed traffic locomotive. Thompson design a mixed traffic, it's to rival the, I think, Halls and Black Fives. So yeah, I thought I'd uh, mix it up, see what, see what happens, see what it looks like. Uh, my opinion on the model, there's no issues at all with my model. Yeah, this Metro Start was bent, but that was due, cause, due to the packaging, which I've fixed, I think, hopefully, just need to press it back in. And, and, it, and it works. Apart from that, there was no issues whatsoever. Smooth as a baby's bum out, 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 out the box. Really good. Really quiet as well. I, I would highly recommend these over the other two that are out there, the other two manufacturers that do it, which is Backman and Mainline. Just simply because this is a lot finer, a lot better, a lot more care and attention has gone into this uh, locomotive in every aspect, in my opinion. And, and yes, it looks fantastic in BR Black with lined livery. It looks the part to me. I, I had, did have a B1 um, many years ago and I think a spring box and it was a mainline one and that, I thought that was beautiful. But this is uh, on a different level. I paid £160. From Olivia's Trains, brand new, and these models at the time of recording are getting a little hard to find brand new. You can find lots of them second hand, but not brand new. And I think it's been a while since Hornby have released the B1. Um, my opinion is to redo it, maybe put a smoke generator in it or a flickering firebox. Fairly nice, it doesn't really need upgrading in any aspect for me. Uh, maybe for DC modelers or anything like that, or anyone's doing sound, maybe it doesn't need upgrading, but for me, no, it's perfect in every way. Probably one of my best Hornby runners. Uh, not the best, but one of the best. Um, I highly recommend these uh, Hornby B1s if, you, if you're into your steam or into your Allen ERs. And it is one of Thompson's better um, locomotives as well. Um, so I highly recommend these, like I said. So guys, um, I hope you have seen the next one. So please take care.